गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई होप यू आर फिजिकली एंड मेंटली फिट एंड फाइन डूइंग गुड गाइज वी हैव सीन ब्यूटिफुल थ्री लेक्चर्स वी हैव सीन बैकग्राउंड ऑफ एथिक्स कोड ऑफ एथिक्स वंडरफुल फाइव फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल्स विच आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट for chartered accountants to follow then we have seen uh, uh, threats five types of threats examples of those threats each example can come as a case study remember that so we have seen examples if chartered accountant in practice then examples of threats chartered accountant uh, in service examples of threats now after having look at that then we moved from there and we saw that okay we need to evaluate this threat how big is this threat and there is one test reasonably informed third party test that's a very important test with the help of which we will be able to understand whether this threat is acceptable or not if it is not acceptable either eliminate it or apply safeguards to reduce that threat to acceptable level and if that is not possible that is not possible then you don't have any option left you will have to decline that assignment okay so we have seen this and i have given you audios of uh, two lectures and i know that audio of third lecture is pending don't worry today i will be giving you that yesterday uh, uh, because of the festive season Uh, i was not able to record the audio but today you will be getting that now guys come on get up cheer up keep marking keep scribbling and we are going to the next part we are going to wonderful next part and that is safeguards how to reduce the threat levels suppose there is a situation of self interest threat auditor or his team has invested in shares and debenture there is a self interest threat there is a business relationship self interest threat suppose close relative are sitting in sitting as directors officers as accounts head familiarity threat now in this particular situation when there are threats around the different types of relationship financial relationship business relationship personal relationship there is a familiarity there is a advocacy threat there is a self review threat what to do in these circumstances to reduce threat levels that's very interesting what we can do so we got the shortcut yes guys see guys everywhere across the notes you will find that you won't find any single bulky paragraph you will find that each and every point is hardly two to three lines it becomes very very easy very very simple to read notes to study notes and to remember them and then i'll be always giving you some way to remember it either it will be some flow either it will be a mnemonic either it will be a chart either it will be a story okay and most importantly i am giving you audios so if you make use of them it will be comparatively very easy to remember and retain audit subject now let's see safeguards okay now trap karo threats trap is the shortcut okay karo is a hindi word it simply means trap threats you can simply feel trap threats okay now T is for teams. T is for teams. R is for resourcing. R is again for review. A is for another firm. P is for partner. Let's see trap. Separate teams. So if you feel that. Uh, uh, 
there is a lot of confidential info if you feel in an assignment so you went for audit and you come to know that there is a big research and development program going on in the company and that's a very very secret and very important crucial program a lot of sensitive information is there a lot of confidential information is there team members team members may think about using this confidential information to get personal gain so in the process of self interest in the process of self interest they may compromise with the fundamental principles they may compromise with the fundamental principle of confidentiality so to reduce the threat level so if there is a sensitive information confidential information to reduce the threat level what you can do you can have separate team so for sensitive information you have a small team of 1 to 2 or 3 persons that they are doing audit of the sensitive information they are very they are senior people they are very reliable they are experienced they are ethical we know them since long so have a separate team for sensitive and confidential area and have a separate team for other areas by doing this by doing this you automatically preserve lot of sensitive information and you protect and you protect the principle of confidentiality that's lovely that's wonderful to have separate team okay separating teams when dealing with confidential matters to address self interest threat then next is resourcing see if we think that yes there is a there is a there is a possibility there is a pressure that compromising compromise can happen with the fundamental principle let's be more alert let let's put more efforts let's put more resources in a particular area in a particular area suppose eight eight of the team members were required let's put 10 let's put 10 let's do work more carefully let's spend more time let's ensure that we are not compromising with the fundamental principles in any manner assigning additional time and qualified personnel to task when engagement accepted to address self interest threat so it's wonderful that you, you do what you have more people and more time to do the work if you do that assigning more time and more people to do work see that's again very good you know that there is chances that things may go wrong there are chances that things may go wrong then moment you put more number of people you give more time automatically people are doing putting more efforts they are more careful in there are more careful chances of compromising with the fundamental process it get reduces and that's what safeguards do safeguard reduces the threat level so resourcing more people and more time reduces the threat level t for team separate teams r for resourcing then one more r review if you feel that principles may get compromised increase the review increase number of reviews okay you can have two reviews in a week earlier you used to have reviews on saturday earlier you used to have reviews on saturday saturday you used to check work of the whole week but now now you can have now you can have multiple reviews you can have two reviews in a week three reviews in a week it is an extreme maybe at the uh, at the end of the assignment or crucial matters you can have more number of reviews so have more number of reviews and you can have a good reviewer you can have a very experienced very experienced knowledgeable and most importantly a smart reviewer okay involving another firm to perform involving another firm sorry having an appropriate reviewer not part of the team you have appropriate reviewer have a high quality reviewer very experienced very knowledgeable experienced reputable 
हु इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द टीम ब्रिंग रिव्यूअर फ्रॉम द ब्रिंग रिव्यूअर फ्रॉम आउटसाइड आउटसाइड द टीम ही कैन बी मेंबर ऑफ द फर्म ही मे नॉट बी मेंबर ऑफ द फर्म रिव्यू द वर्क और प्रोवाइड एडवाइस नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द टीम टू रिव्यू द वर्क और प्रोवाइड एडवाइस he can give advisory also to address the self review thread you know that you are reviewing your you know that you are reviewing your own work and when you are reviewing your own work there is chances that you compromise with the fundamental principles you will keep on saying everything is good everything is fine unmodified opinion unmodified opinion unmodified opinion because ultimately you are checking your own work directly or indirectly Three years back, you only established the complete internal control system, and now you are only doing the audit. Okay, so there is a self-review thread. So there is self-review thread. Do one thing: have a very good quality reviewer, and uh, you can do one more thing. This reviewer should not be part of the team. That means he should be coming outside the team. If he is coming outside the team, then he will not get influenced by the team. he will not get influenced by the team so have a good reviewer bring him from outside the team he will not get influenced increase the frequency of the review and then again chances of compromising with the fundamental principles will reduce it will again reduce thread to acceptable level okay then next is another firm another firm yeah that's that's really interesting if you feel that lot of our members are uh, lot of our members are uh, directly indirectly connected to people in the people in the company in the client where we are doing audit do one thing appoint another firm for sensitive areas important areas instead of deploying our own team you can outsource the work to another firm so if another firm is doing it automatically that familiarity threat Familiarity threat will get compensated. Okay, you don't need to remember which thing is for which threat. It will come by common sense. Okay, don't need to mug up that. That is not required. See, guys, don't try to mug up everything. That's not a good idea. Don't try to mug up everything. That is not a good idea, guys. Okay. Now, because just remember the key points and express in own words. another firm involving another firm to perform or reperform to perform or reperform part of the engagement to address it can this is a wonderful thing to bring someone else it can compensate self interest thread because someone else is doing it self review thread because someone else is doing it advocacy thread because someone else is doing advocacy thread uh, it can happen that uh, your one department is helping the company in getting shares listed and your another department and your another depart and your another department is doing audit this can happen so in a big four big four there are uh, different departments different entities Pri like price auto scoopers limited is a consulting arm is a consulting arm they are helping to get uh, to get the shares listed and the audit firm is doing audit so there is a there is a conflict of interest now uh when you are promoting at at one at one in one particular assignment you are uh doing lot of uh, you are praising company they are highlighting good points you are promoting them and in the other assignment you are in the other in the other assignment you are checking and you are finding what are the material misstatement you want to find out all the mistakes all the misstatements you want to report the misstatements so do one thing give this audit work to another firm on assignment basis automatically you nullify the advocacy threat family threat okay so intimidation threat you are intimidating us but audit is done by someone else so this is a master stroke appointing another firm is a master stroke but definitely it is going to come with cost definitely it is it, it is going to come with cost 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 is going to matter but then in some situation you have to take this uh, take these steps to reduce threat to acceptable level then partners of non assurance services partners do one thing so like i was discussing 
many times you firm get multiple uh, firm get multiple work from the multiple work from the company from the client they get they may get the statutory audits tax audits uh, so they may get audits basically they may get tax consultancy work also they may get tax planning also they may get legal planning also do one thing in your firm have different verticals so audit is one vertical with different partners and tax consultancy is a different vertical with different partners so when you are giving non assurance services non audit services okay see there is a conflict of interest in one assignment again you have to find out the misstatements and in the other assignments you have to promote and protect the promote and protect the company so there is a conflict of interest do one thing use different partners that's what generally is done, generally done in all the big firms and all the big fours so for assurance assignment use different partners and their teams for non assurance services like tax like tax advisory like tax advisory like uh, legal advi like legal advisory have different team have different team okay have different partner and team so using different partner and team again reduces reduces the situation of conflict of interest and reduces the chances of compromising with the fundamental principles so, so these are beautiful safeguards wonderfully well thought these are small small things which can reduce the threat levels using different partners using different partners and teams different partners and teams with separate reporting lines for non assurance services to an assurance plan to address self review advocacy or family threat it's a very important question very very important question i expect this question to come in exams to come in exams so it's going to come in uh, upcoming exams only attempt is not fixed for sure i will give it to you in writing on stamp paper on stamp paper yes and if it doesn't come i will refund the fees ha huh? proportionately proportionately so fees divided by total number of concept taught into the concept which didn't come in exam i will refund that fees sir see i am a chartered accountant <laughs> i am not going to screw myself okay and uh, so anyways that is extremely important and then i also said that uh, in which attempt in which attempt it is going to come okay so only that is not clear it may come in immediate next attempt or maybe after uh, one or two attempts but it will come same guts and is interesting to how the threats are reduced how the risk level are reduced it's it's beautiful to learn these things to understand these things someone must have thought uh, a lot then applied it then checked it and when they was when it was successful when it was successful then uh, it it was uh, framed in code of ethics now guys we are through with this so we are through with the fundamental principles their threats their examples and how to deal how to deal with these threats how to safeguard them and bring it to the acceptable level now we are starting with very interesting very interesting no clar Uh, this this terminology is uh, very uh, getting very famous no clar see what is this it's very simple guys so whenever non compliance happens in in front of a chartered accountant in front of chartered accountant non compliance happens what is he supposed to do there was there was no clarity there was no clarity 
what are the responsibilities of the chartered accountant when he when he comes across when he comes across non compliance during his practice or during his job service what should be done are we supposed to are we uh, what, what are we supposed to do when we you, when you come across non compliance correct are we supposed to go and thrash those people that thrash those people those who are doing non compliance are we supposed to take them to police are we are we supposed to go and report uh, authorities and government about the non compliance uh, are we supposed to ourselves uh, rectify the situation and start uh, and start uh, compliance on behalf of the company are we supposed to do that so basically there was lack of clarity what chartered accountants are supposed to do and then there was a lot of criticism by stakeholders government authorities that chartered accountants they know a lot of non compliances non compliances of law happening in the company but still but still chartered accountants but still chartered accountants are not doing anything so there was lack of clarity there there was criticism so keeping all these things in mind this concept was developed no clear that is non compliance with law and regulation non so n o that is non non compliance with law and regulation so if chartered accountant ca chartered accountant in practice or chartered accountant in service they come across this situation where laws are non complied what should be done is explained in this uh, in this part of noclar and noclar is officially part of code of ethics but let me tell you guys we are not having noclar in detail so they are explaining some principles which are connected to noclar what should be done exactly when there is a non compliance it is not covered in detail in our course so overview is given see it is not possible to include everything in the course so at many places they simply make you aware that such things exist and uh, what is the purpose of these things and then how to uh, how to apply these things how to apply this thing to various situation they simply explain that so this simply explain that give a overview so tomorrow when you go to practice you know that there is something called noclar and if you come across the situation you will open code of ethics you will go to that particular portion read it and act accordingly okay so what is the first thing is what is definition of non compliance it's very simple what definition of non compliance when uh, non compliance means any act any act if you are do, if uh, a person is doing something which is not as per law rules and regulation or he is not doing something which was required which was required as per law rules and regulation he is not taking permission license to do business that's a non that's a non compliance uh, he is not maintaining registers that's a that's a non compliance he is not paying fees that's a non compliance he is not reporting that's a non compliance okay he was uh, he was supposed to pay minimum wages he is not paying minimum wages that's a non compliance so it's very simple refers to actions or inactions it can be intentional or unintentional that's important non compliance can be intentional non intentional that is contravention of the current law rules and regulation so non compliance means some actions or inactions which are contra which are against the existing law rules and regulation it can be intentional or unintentional so this noclar is simply going to explain what are the responsibilities of chartered accountants who are in practice 
and what are the responsibilities of chartered accountants who are who are in service professional accountants may encounter non compliance with law and regulation while providing services to client or carrying out activities for an employer these incident can be actual or suspected actual or suspected comma then you write after that there or full stop it explains So it explains what are the responsibility in such circumstances. What are the responsibilities in such circumstances? Okay. Now, now this is extremely important. These two things can come in cases in MCQs. So. Chartered accountants are supposed to respond, supposed to respond to non-compliance as per principles given in NOCLAR. But the very important question is non-compliance by whom? Non-compliance by whom? So, for example, suppose we come to know that supplier of the company is doing illegal activities are we supposed to apply no clear then employees of the company are, uh, are, are employees of the company they are doing non compliance are we supposed to do apply no clear customers are doing illegal activity are we supposed to apply no clear Manage, directors are doing something illegal. Are we supposed to apply no clear? So, we are doing audit of a company. We are doing audit of company and these guys are doing illegal activities. Or similarly, we are doing job in a company. We are doing job in a company and again, these guys which we just spoke about whether it is supplier or employees or customers or uh, directors managers they are non compliant they are doing illegal activities there is a non compliance are we supposed to apply no clear very interesting if i would have been the examiner i would have definitely drafted a mcq here so let's understand guys so, if you are a chartered accountant in practice and you are doing audit, if you are a chartered accountant in practice and you are doing audit, you are doing audit of a company, of a client, then non-compliance, illegal activities by the company, number one, the client whom you are doing audit or they are TCWG, those charged with governance or their management, management or their employees. If non-compliance is done by the client or TCWG of the client or management of the client or employee of the client, see if, so if any four of them, if any four of them are doing non compliance we have to apply no clear or if a chartered accountant if a chartered accountant if a chartered accountant is doing job then the employer 
that can be a company, that can be a partnership firm, that can be any entity, employer, then TCWG, those charged with governance of the employer or management of the employer or any employee of the employer. So, four, four type of persons are covered, are covered for chartered accountant in practice and four types of persons are covered for chartered accountants in job. I hope it is crystal clear in your mind. Now, one more thing, if uh, you have any doubt, if you have any, if you have any, uh, any kind of doubt, what is uh, TCWG and what is management? Listen, it's very simple guys. So, uh, in any entity, group of people who perform, who perform, group of people who perform day-to-day -day operations, day-to-day -day operations or day-to-day -day operations of the company. So, they are in the company from morning 9 to evening 9, just an example. Uh, and they are managing all the operations, whether it is purchases, uh, on daily day-to-day -day basis, the purchases or production or uh, uh, sale, dispatches, recovery, accounting, they are called as management. Then group of people who come periodically, say on monthly basis, say on, say on monthly basis, monthly basis or uh, uh, or quarterly basis, they are coming and they are supervising how business is going on, what are good things, what are bad things and then they sit and they take strategic decisions, uh, whether to go into new businesses, where to close businesses, how to expand business. So, they take strategic decisions, they make policies, how business should be conducted, they make policies, how business should be conducted, uh, should we import should we use local vendors and so on. So, they take strategic decisions. So, they come for oversight, supervision. They take strategic decisions. They make policies and then they give it to the management that you implement it. So, they are, they will be called as TCWG, those charged with governance, those who are given responsibility, those who are given response, those who are given responsibility to govern the company, to direct the company, it will be called as TCWG, those charged with governance. So, four type of persons are covered if you are doing practice, four type of persons are covered if, if you are into job, okay. So, if supplier does something illegal, you are not supposed to apply no clerk. If customer do, do something illegal, you are not supposed to apply no clan. How interesting. A case study may come here. So, be careful about it. Then, next is, uh, suppose, suppose you see that, you see that uh, managing director of the company is, uh, has done drink and drive, drink and drive. So, Saturday night, full tight. Bad, very bad. Okay. We are, so we are into CA, CA students. CA students is, is all about studies. Yeah, CA student is all about studies. They don't get time. They, they don't get time for, to think about any such thing. So, so doing, it's, it's a distant thing. Doing is a distant thing altogether. Okay. So, Managing director, managing director uh, has been caught for drink and drive, for drink and drive and he has been jailed, he has been jailed. So, is that a non-compliance of law? Yeah, of course, that's a non-compliance of law and uh, we came to know about this, we came to know about this, are we supposed to, okay? Are we supposed to apply no uh, apply no clear? Answer is no. Personal misconducts. So if these if these four persons when we talk about practice, four persons when we talk about uh, service, if these guys 
they do illegal activities unlawful activities in their personal lives in their personal lives not in their uh, not when they are working in the company when not when they are working in the company not when they are performing their professional work okay then chartered accountant is not supposed to apply no clar so if the perpetrators people who are doing illegal activities are outside this eight no need to apply no clar and if there is a personal misconduct again no need to apply no clar so this can come in exams guys non compliance can be committed by client accounting accountants employing organization or tcwg management employee of client or employing organization so basically basically if there is a ca in practice or there is ca in service so a ca in practice if non compliance is by client client can be a company can be a partnership firm can be individual or tcwg of the client or management of the client or employee of the client if these guys do if these guys if these guys uh, do non if these guys do illegal activity if these guys do illegal activities non compliance then no clar will be applicable when we talk about ca in service again employer employer or tcwg of the employer or management of the employer or employee of the employer if these guys do something something uh, illegal again no clar will be uh, again we need to apply no clar the revised code of ethics does not address does not address personal misconduct unrelated to the business activities nor non compliance of parties not specifically mentioned in the non compliance definition unrelated to the business activities so if uh, if they are doing something in their personal life which has nothing to do with the business activities professional activities no clause is not applicable or non compliance by parties by parties not specifically mentioned that's what we said that uh, that's what we said suppliers doing something not covered employees uh, customers doing something not covered we will not we are not able we will won't be applying no clar so guys it's very simple so they are explaining what do you mean by non compliance when you don't follow when your actions are against or you are not doing something which is required that's non compliance and uh, it simply gives a responsibility what to do only eight types of perpetrators are covered and personal misconduct is not covered now as per international ethical standard board okay as per international ethical standard board for accountants examples what kind of laws what kind of laws uh, are gen are generally applicable appli what kind of laws are generally uh, are generally applicable to companies uh, companies their uh, tcwg direct and employees where non compliance happens so simply give examples simply give examples of nature of laws nature of laws where chartered accountant is going to find non compliances uh, nature of laws where he is going to find non compliances so that he can have a overview he can have overview of such kind of laws applicable to the company so we have made a mnemonic SBI is under FM department. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. 
एस बी आई इज अंडर फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री एफ एम डिपार्टमेंट एफ एम डिपार्टमेंट सो लेट सी एस सो दिस इज द एग्जाम दीज आर द काइंड ऑफ लॉज वेयर यू आर गोइंग टू सी नॉन कंप्लायस सो द चार्ड अकाउंटेंट सो चार्ड अकाउंटेंट हुआ सो चार्ड अकाउंटेंट हुआ इन प्रैक्टिस चार्ड अकाउंटेंट हुआ इन प्रैक्टिस और चार्ड अकाउंटेंट हुआ डूइंग जॉब दीज काइंड दीज आर दी लॉज ड्यूरिंग यूर कोर्स ऑफ प्रोफेशनल वर्क यू मे कम अक्रॉस नॉन कंप्लायस इन दिस काइंड ऑफ लॉज ओके एस स्टैंड फॉर सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट एंड ट्रेडिंग सो लॉज विच आर एप्लीकेबल टू सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट्स एंड ट्रेडिंग सो सेबी एक्ट सेबी सेबी एक्ट सेबी रेगुलेशन इन दीज लॉज यू मे फाइंड नॉन कंप्लायस देन बी स्टैंड फॉर बैंकिंग सो बैंकिंग एंड अदर फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स एंड सर्विसेस सो वेन यू आर डूइंग बैंक ऑडिट देर कैन बी नॉन कंप्लायस ऑफ बैंकिंग बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट देन आर बी आई सर्क्यूलर्स देन एस बी आई एफ एम फ्रॉड करप्शन ड्राइबरी या देर कैन बी नॉन कंप्लाय देर कैन बी नॉन कंप्लायस ऑफ पी एम एल ए प्रिवेंशन ऑफ मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग एक्ट पी एम एल ए एक्ट ओके एंटी करप्शन एक्ट देन मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग इज सिंपली कन्वर्टिंग यूर ब्लैक मनी इन टू व्हाइट मनी मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग टेरिस्ट फाइनेंसिंग प्रोसीड्स ऑफ प्रोसीड्स ऑफ क्राइम सो अगेन सच काइंड ऑफ नॉन यू मे कम अक्रॉस सच काइंड ऑफ नॉन कंप्लायस ऑल्सो देन डिपार्टमेंट डी पी टी डेटा प्रोटेक्शन सो नो रिसेंटली इंडिया हैज अ न्यू लॉ न्यू लॉ एंड इफ डेटा इफ दे इज अ लीक ऑफ डेटा अप टू वॉट पेनाल्टी अप टू हंड्रेड क्रोर्स हंड्रेड क्रोर्स और मे बी मोर कैन बी अप्लाइड सो यू मे कम अक्रॉस नॉन कम ब्रीच ऑफ डेटा प्रोटेक्शन लॉज एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन लॉज पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड सेफ्टी लॉज टैक्स एंड पेंशन लाइबिलिटीज एंड पेमेंट्स सो चार्ड अकाउंटेंट्स मे कम अक्रॉस नॉन कंप्लायस इन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ लॉज दीज आर द एग्जाम्पल्स दीज आर सम ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल्स वेयर ही मे कम अक्रॉस नॉन कंप्लायस सो एस इज फॉर सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट एंड ट्रेडिंग बी इज फॉर बैंकिंग एंड अदर फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स एफ एम देन एफ इज फॉर फ्रॉड्स करप्शन ब्राइबरी एम इज फॉर मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग टेरिस फाइनेंसिंग department d is for data protection e is for environmental protection p is for public health and safety t is for tax and pension liability and payments so in these areas in these laws non compliances may happen so you may you may be asked a very simple question uh, please give a overview what in which laws non compliance may happen okay uh, which laws so these are the examples kind of the laws where non compliance can happen so have a overview of these laws which are applicable to your client or applicable to your employer okay what is the objective what is the ultimate target here objective means target why noclar noclar was created why noclar was created so it's again very simple so uh, many times what used to happen because of lack of clarity because because of because of lack of clarity whenever whenever chartered accountant used to come across a non come across non compliance they used to get freezed okay they used to get freezed they were not aware what to do in these circumstances what to do what to do in these circumstances so to 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 educate them to educate them to guide them to clarify we have no clar very simple okay like uh, this this happens with lot of boys or this may happen with girls also lot of boys that uh, uh, in teenage or maybe your age also you get freezed when girl comes and talk to you when girl comes and talk to you, you get freezed you don't know how to respond what to say okay and you may become very cautious you know uh, uh, you know you may become very uh, cautious or conscious uh, cautious or conscious in your approach okay so see this used to happen this happened with me i was in a boarding school i was in a boarding school for 8th 9th and 10th 
एट नाइन्थ एंड टेंथ आई वॉज इन बोर्डिंग स्कूल एंड सो आई वॉज इन आई वॉज आई वॉज इन अ डिविजन एंड इट वॉज ऑल बॉयज डिविजन सो देर वॉज ओनली वन डिविजन वेयर देर वेर गर्ल्स ऑल्सो सो ऑल बॉयज डिविजन so generally we uh, uh, we were never supposed to interact with the girls okay so automatically there was uh, uh, natural awkwardness uh, during exam time exam time it happened exam time it happened that that uh, most beautiful senior of ours and the whole school okay Uh, is appreciating her beauty her appearance now she is sitting next to me she is sitting next to me for writing exams for writing exams now i became very uh, conscious uh, i thought she is observing me okay what i am doing so i was i was uncomfortable little awkward and i was not writing my paper properly and uh, my class teacher she knew that i always i am always in top 1 2 and uh, i am not uh, writing paper properly so she waited for one paper to get over then second paper to get over and she saw in both the papers i am i am not comfortable so she called me the ravi do you know one thing yes madam half of the world half of the world is girls and women if you are not comfortable with them then you are going to face lot of challenges across your life so it is better that you relax that you become comfortable when you deal with the girls and that day i realized yeah that's true half of the world is girls and i cannot uh, feel i, I cannot uh, be someone who feels awkward uh, or co- conscious when there are girls around or they are talking to us and maybe from that my approach changed and uh, i said simply one thing to myself uh, maybe just like uh, i i behave just like i talk to uh, just like i talk to my other friends i will talk to any other girl maybe and uh, let's not uh, let's not keep it very different that is the approach i should follow and then uh, i became comfortable overall so on same lines this is the objective of no clar don't get freezed don't get freezed okay so you will always remember what is the objective of a nuclear don't get freeze the nuclear framework ensures the professional accountants cannot again guys don't get worried about so many points and theory i am giving you lovely beautiful audios listen to them on regular basis and you will be all comfortable very comfortable within 15 to 20 hours we are going to complete complete audit in that right now simply say it understand why this concept is there how it will be applied what kind of question or what kind of mcq i will get on this and move next don't many time students uh, you know two types of students can never study two types of students can never study number one students who keep on uh, they are always worried students are always worried one year before the exam they will ask sir i will be able to cover my course what in one year you have lot of time start studying don't worry the same guys will again come same guys will again come sir will i be able to study 9 months to go 6 months to go 3 months to go 
they will keep on worrying. So these students who are always very anxious, always very anxious, always very worried, okay, these guys they won't be able to study. And second category is the careless category. They are not aware what is in the course. So don't be in either of them. Don't be in either of them. Don't be always worried and don't be extremely careless. You should be somewhere in between. Enjoy the concept, love the concept, do the marking. Next, don't worry about the revision, leave it to me. Okay. So, the NOCLAR framework ensures that framework, professional accountant cannot ignore suspected or actual non-compliance. So, whenever suspected, suspected or actual compliance come up, you should not uh, ignore, you should not get freeze, you are supposed to respond, you are supposed to respond in a particular manner, in a particular fashion, following particular principles. The NOCLAR framework enhances the awareness and understanding of professional accountants regarding their obligation when encountering with the limb. So, so that people are not freeze, they don't ignore, and they perform their responsibilities properly, making them aware about their responsibilities. That is a simple object, that is the simple objective of NOCLA. But one thing in mind, if someone thinks that, if someone, if someone thinks that NOCLA has come up, so now manage TCWG and management, they are relieved. Yay, NOCLA is, NOCLA has come up. Now chartered accountants are supposed to look after the non-compliances, they are supposed to, they are supposed to prevent non-compliances, they are supposed to take corrective action in non-compliances. No, 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 no. It is your company. It is your company. Listen, client. It is your company. You are responsible to run the business. You are responsible to run the show. Okay. So you are responsible to prevent non-compliance and ensure compliance. It is your ultimate responsibility. You are supposed to do that. Okay. That is not going to reduce your responsibility in any manner. NOCLAR is going to tell us that we are not supposed to ignore these circumstances when we are supposed to respond in this particular fashion. So, in no manner, no reduction in roles and responsibilities of TCWG and management when it comes to compliance of law. It is their responsibility to prevent non-compliance detect and correct non compliance they are the they, it is their primary responsibility of course it has to be their primary responsibility is your company your company you know everything about it you have the powers you are the stakeholders you are the beneficiaries you will take care of it we won't it is not our responsibility come on that is not our responsibility isn't it now again very interesting some important, uh, some important, clarifications with respect to NOCLAR. So, first thing, now this, this can come important facts about NOCLAR. So, we have studied one, one thing there. See, it is a theory portion. This is how theory is different. This is, the, this is how theory is different from practical. Okay. In, uh, in practical, in FR, in SFM, in uh, costing, uh, what happens? You read each and every line very carefully. In fact, in law also, law based things also, you read each and each and every, each and every line uh, each and every line very carefully even if, if one rate changes if one rate changes everything changes okay whole problem whole problem has changed the whole approach has changed and what not but in theory 
the person who wrote theory okay he didn't think so much he wanted to express his experience he wanted to express his experience codify his experience codify his principles so it may happen that one thing may again repeat see in law committee set they refine it n number of times and then they make law and then and then they make and then they make law okay and so in law that things happen so generally there are no repetitions so don't worry about the repetition so important facts chartered accountants are not responsible for compliance of law rules and regulation they are not responsible to prevent non compliances or detect investigate and correct non compliances compliance is not our responsibility to prevent detect correct non compliance is not our responsibility so let's be clear about it noclar has come that doesn't mean the responsibility of tcwg and management has reduced anywhere it has reduced anywhere it is your it is still their responsibility to comply with the law and to prevent detect correct non compliances so not responsible for compliance uh, for compliance or prevent detect investigate and correct non compliances it is it applies if if a chartered accountant see i use the word chartered accountant instead of professional accountant and to be very honest to be very honest you can also use the word okay so if while performing a profession when you are in practice or we are in job if you come across suspected or actual non compliance what you are supposed to do it is for that are we supposed to have extreme expertise no extreme expertise we are supposed to have limited expertise of law rules and regulation which is generally required to conduct our assignment like audit assignment as per law rules regulations and professional standard that is standards on auditing chartered accountants are not supposed to have extreme high level of knowledge of all the laws rules and regulations we are supposed to have limited knowledge of law rules and regulation that level of knowledge that kind of knowledge which is generally required to perform our audits to perform our reviews to perform our assurance assignments to perform the work which we generally do so uh, if noclar is applicable that means we have to enhance our knowledge level with respect to law is incorrect so you can get mcq on this you can get mcq on this that because noclar is applicable uh, noclar is applicable so we should have high level of knowledge of law it is absolutely crap come on it's not like that okay okay now exclusions that simply means non applicability that that simply means that sim that simply that simply means non applicability okay uh, it is non applicable clearly inconsequential clearly inconsequential or related to personal misconduct now one more thing if the if suppose there is a non compliance non compliance by the company which you are auditing or company in which you are working and it is highly inconsequential so inconsequential means it is import amount wise importance wise extremely small or inconsequential simply means 
immaterial. Inconsequential means extremely small. That means it is not having any consequences. It doesn't matter. So if non-compliance is inconsequential, we are not supposed to apply no clear there. If there is a personal misconduct, again we are not supposed to apply no clear there. They are repeating the point of personal misconduct. It is absolutely fine. So, so if no clear is applicable, does that mean that uh, if non-compliance is happen, we, we will take uh, we will take a speaker in our hand and we'll announce. Listen, 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 listen. Company is doing non-compliance. Company is doing non-compliance. 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 Run away from this company. Don't associate from this company. Don't invest in this company. Are we supposed to do that? Uh, no clear is applicable. Uh, so, so are we supposed to spread this non-compliance to everyone? Are we supposed to announce it? Are we supposed to go to authorities? No, 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 no. No clear is applicable. That doesn't mean that we go and inform about the non-compliance to everyone. No, no. We are supposed to simply follow the principles and as per that principle, sometimes it may be required, it may be required to go and inform the authorities. But it is not mandatory that you always go and inform the authority about the non-compliances. So please don't misinterpret no clear. According to uh, International Ethical Science Board of Accountants Code, accountants are not required to disclose matters to authority if such disclosures would be contrary to law or regulation. So they are saying that please don't make any disclosures uh, if in the process of disclosure you are uh, you are going against the you are going against the law rules and regulation so let's be clear once again so there are four types of no no clear is applicable that doesn't means we are responsible for compliance for prevention uh, for detection investigation of non compliance that doesn't mean we are supposed to have extreme level of knowledge of law that uh, uh, is not applicable if it's inconsequential or personal misconduct that doesn't mean that we go and disclose this thing to all the authorities uh, to authorities okay please don't misinterpret no clear don't they don't misinterpret don't exaggerate no clear that's required especially chartered accountants sometimes or in practice see as you go into uh, practice or as you become chartered accountant you are uh, you go away from the academics. You go away from the academics. You don't know what are the many times you don't know what are the latest changes and what things are being said and such kind of uh, wrong assumptions people may make. People may make wrong assumptions. So to avoid those wrong assumptions, it's very important. Okay. Now, let's see, guys. Uh, just on lighter note, see people are wrong. Once you become a chartered accountant, so once you once you become chartered accountant, and now you are into now you are into practice or you are into job, and now you feel that you need some companion, you need a life partner. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to do a lot of high five things, you, you, a lot of high five things. Okay, that uh, I am supposed to date to take her to a very expensive restaurant i'm supposed to give very expensive gifts okay uh, do something i'm not supposed to hire a helicopter to put flowers to put rose petals on her okay so that is not required if if you if genuinely two people like each other they like their company and they will be comfortable okay so people have a lot of assumptions how to impress a person or how to how you are going to get a life partner. So please don't get influenced by movies and by the web series. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, many times if uh, couples are watching these movies and web series because of uh, because of artificial life they are showing there, problems happen with the actual couples. Why don't you do such things with me? Huh? Why don't you? Uh, why don't you plan something like this for my for our anniversary for my birthday? Oh, that is movie. That is web series. It is designed by director. They are spending loads of money. 
their it's their job we cannot do this if we do all these things who will teach who will do my work okay now applicability of nuclear in india applicability of nuclear in india extremely important extremely important 100% you are going to get case from it 100% 100% you are going to get case from it now why this because it's interesting uh, it can be drafted into case very easily and there has been recent amendment also there is a recent amendment also in this so there are two sections so if you remember i i uh, uh, i you know, we saw code of ethics we saw code of ethics so uh, in code of ethics there were sections there were sections in code of ethics okay so there are two sections section 260 and section 360 section 260 and section 360 section 260 talks about applicability of noclar to cas in service and 360 talks about applicability of noclar of cas in practice so principles for CAs in service, NOCLAR principles for CA in service and NOCLAR principles for CA in practice are drafted separately. Yeah, they are drafted separately and their applicability is also separate. So, now, so let's first talk about, uh, let's talk about chart accountants who are in job. Let's uh, talk about chart account, chart accountants who are in job. Uh, one more thing before we see this. Noclar for chart account service is further divided into two parts. Noclar princip principles for senior, so there are, uh, for senior accountants. So, chart accountants who are who are seniors in the organization, like directors, officers, uh, directors, officers, or senior employees. Okay, so they are called senior professionals. So, noclar noclar responsibilities of senior professionals are little higher as compared to noclar responsibilities for uh, noclar responsibilities. For chart accountants who are not into senior professional, for junior professionals. Once again, see, NOCLAR responsibilities are divided in two parts. NOCLAR principles for CAs in service and NOCLAR principles for CA in practice. So, when we talk about NOCLAR principles in service, it is further divided into two parts. So, responsibilities for senior accountants and responsibilities for other accountants. That means, Chart accountants who are playing an important role and chart accountants who are playing other roles. Noclar And then
So, if we talk about uh, Nuclear, as I said, for C in practice, for C in service, there are additional for there is extra responsibilities for CAs uh, who are senior accountants and other accountants. Okay, now let's talk about applicability. If a chartered accountant is is no right now in India, right now in India, Nuclear is applicable. To those chartered accountant in service who are doing job in listed companies and in a position of senior accountant. So in India right now, if there is a chartered accountant, number one, he is doing job in a listed company and he is playing a role of senior accountant that means he is acting as a director or acting as an officer or acting as a employee a senior employee sorry senior employee senior employee then only no clarvis will get applicable that means suppose the chart accountant a chart account a he is working in a listed company as a director is he supposed to follow no clar yes he is working as a senior employee there he is advisor to board of director he is head of accounts. He is supposed to follow NOCLAR? Yes. So this is a chartered accountant B. He has just joined the accounts department, finance department, tax department. He is not yet director or officer or senior employee. That level, he is not that big level. Is NOCLAR applicable to him? No. NOCLAR is not applicable to him. He is not a key management person. Nuclear is not applicable to him. If a chartered accountant, now see again, I am twisting because this can come as MCQ. If a chartered accountant is working as managing director in an unlisted company, in an unlisted company, will Nuclear get applicable? No. So remember these things. It should be a listed company and he should be playing role of a senior chartered accountant. These two things are required. These two things are required. Generally, senior employees who can significantly influence make decisions. Key management, if they are working as a role of key management person, again they are senior chart account. And then, no clar for chart account in practice. If a CA firm, if a CA firm is doing audit of a listed company. Audit engagement of listed company. If you're doing audit of if you're doing audit of listed company, that's extremely important. Audit of entities, audit of listed entities. In India, listed in India, or have and sorry, 
and have net worth of 250 crores or more so if you are doing audit of a listed entity which is having a net worth of 250 crores or more and during the course of this particular assignment if you come across non compliance then a chartered accountant is supposed to apply noclar so right now noclar is applicable with in context of big entities in context of big entities if you're doing job in listed company and that too you're acting as a senior professional accountant and if you're doing audit of a listed company that to a net worth of 250 crores or more now this is very interesting the word uses and so is it applicable to all the listed entities no it is not applicable to all the listed only those listed entities having net worth only those listed entities having net worth of 250 crores or more having net worth of 250 crores or more okay be careful about this an audit or audit engagement is a an audit engagement is a reasonable assurance engagement where professional account in public practice express an opinion whether financial can give true and fair accounts applicable framework and it is applicable only when you are doing audits audits okay so if you are if you are giving uh, if you are giving uh, if you are if you are doing review see review word has two meanings to do the whole checking in short that is called review that is review engagement we are having a separate chapter on this in new course review engagement review engagement and and uh, and if junior uh, if junior has worked and senior comes and checks the work checks the work that is also called as review so review has two meanings here when i talk about review right now it's a review engagement so if you are doing review of listed if you are doing if you are doing list if you are if you are doing audit of listed company if you are doing audit of listed company okay then will no clerk get applicable yes if net worth is 250 crores or more but if you're doing review of such company no clerk will not get applicable okay so it's only audit assignments as on today and then uh, next people will again confuse a private uh, a pri if you're doing audit of private company having net worth 500 crores or more private comp private company having net you are doing audit of a private company having net worth 500 crores or more whether no clerk will get applicable no it's a listed company and then there is a condition and then there is a condition for the net worth also so be be extremely careful about it okay now Now, next is interesting to understand. See, many times this happened that that uh, on one particular issue, there are two documents talking about it. On one particular issue, there are two documents talking about it. So we need to we need to understand both the documents, how they are similar and how they are different. We need to understand. I need to comply with both. Just on the lighter note, once you get married, okay, there are two authorities for boys. I am saying there are two authorities, okay. So you are supposed to uh, follow. One is mom. You have been following mom since you were this small. This small. And then his wife and you, 
you made promises that you will follow okay so for peaceful life it is very important that both the authorities that both the authorities okay they are very comfortable with each other there should not be a lot of difference of opinion otherwise they were against crude okay let's see guys applicability sa250 sa250 is applicable sa250 is applicable only to audits sa250 is applicable only to audits audits whereas noclar applies to professional accountant so sa250 is app see, see okay let me first give you background of fsa250 so to sa250 is a standard which explains which explains we are going to see this standard in detail which explained responsibility responsibility uh, responsibility of auditor with respect to uh, responsibility of the auditor when he is dealing with laws rules and regulations applicable to the client so it basically explained what are your responsibilities while doing audit with respect to various laws rules and regulations which are applicable to client are you supposed to examine evaluate compliance of all the laws uh, or some laws and how you are supposed to perform your duties so how you are supposed to check compliance how you are supposed to check compliance of law rules and regulation and what you are supposed to do if there is a non compliance these responsibilities are given in 250 so if you are doing audit of financial statement and during the audit you come across a lot of laws and rule law rules and application applicable to company what are your responsibilities what examination you have to perform what to do if there's a non-compliance so these things are given as a 250 so there's a common thing noclar also says how to respond to non-compliance how to respond to non-compliance and sa 250 says during the audit if you come across non-compliance how to respond to it okay so SA250 is applicable when you are doing audit of financial statements. But NOCLAR is applicable. NOCLAR, NOCLAR is applicable. Uh, it's, it's much broader. In all aspects, NOCLAR is much broader. What to do if you come across non-compliance when you are doing a job? Well, what to do if you come out when you are doing when you are into a, when you are into practice? So the scope, scope. Uh, scope uh, is much broader as compared to SA250. SA250 is applicable to a specific situation. You're doing audit of financial statements. You come across non-compliance. What to do in such scenario? Keeping audit in mind. And when it comes to NOCLAR, what to do uh, in these two situations? What to do? So it's much bigger scope, larger scope as compared to SA250. Loss covered. SA 250 says that auditor should evaluate, uh, auditor should evaluate and pay, atten pay more attention to those laws which are affecting the, which are affecting, uh, which are affecting continuity of the business, which are affecting continuity of the business and which are affecting financial statements and having financial impact. So again, SA 250 has a restricted approach. It is, it, is, it is saying to focus on limited number of laws. But on the other hand, NOCLAR talks about, NOCLAR doesn't restrict, doesn't limit that only these kind of, uh, the only, uh, you have to see only these kind of non-compliance. It is open-ended. It has given list. We have seen the list. But then it is not an exhaustive list. It is not restricting. Whatever different types of laws applicable to entity and if there is non-compliance in any of those laws, NOCLAR will get applicable. So SA 250 has a very restricted approach and that is fine because objective is to give open on financial statement. And NOCLAR is a broader approach because their objective is to respond properly to non-compliance. Both are, uh, we cannot say that SA 250 is somewhere less or we cannot devalue 250. 
it is designed with design keeping in mind different things and noclar is designed keeping in mind different things sa250 outlines sa250 sa250 outlines auditor response sa250 outlines auditors responsibility for laws directly affecting and determination of material amounts and disclosure in financial statement so it is fake focusing on laws which are having direct material impact on financial statement tax laws labor laws and so on it also covers it also covers law regulation that are not directly affecting financial statement are fundamental to business operations continue that's what i said continuity of business operations very important for business noclar extend beyond this by considering non compliance that could cause substantial harm with serious financial or non financial consequences that could cause substantial harm with serious financial or non financial consequences so noclar uh, noclar talks about okay it can be any law it can be any law where non compliance can have a substantial financial or non financial impact it will be covered in noclar so the scope is quite bigger any law having substantial impact harm whether it is financial whether it is non financial noclar is applicable so when you talk about assignments when you talk about assignments noclar is broader when it talks about law again noclar is broader stakeholder unlike 250 sa250 doesn't talk about stakeholders sa250 is like your objective is to give opinion and uh, while framing opinion evaluate these things keep in mind these things but noclar defines the noclar says that as a professional you are supposed to you are supposed to see what is going to be the impact of non compliance on different stakeholders impact of non compliance on lot of stakeholders uh investors creditors those who have given money your lenders employees general public so it it comes up with a new concept of stakeholder that keep in mind impact on everyone sa250 doesn't talk about these things exceptional circumstances and disclosure exceptional circumstances and disclosure okay that's very very crucial part sa250 says that if you come across non compliance go and go and inform this to authorities if it is required by law so if there is any specific law which says that go and inform in this particular situation you are supposed to go and inform then only go and inform so approaches if approach it doesn't say that you should go and inform it says that go and read law if law says then you disclose so it is keeping client and auditor both safe be safe but noclar changes this approach and that's a big change noclar changes this approach and that's a big change noclar says that noclar says that if it's a very big eminent breach very big non compliance you should go and report that's a very big thing you and you should go and report this to authorities you should go and report this to authorities unless go and report this to authorities okay unless it is prohibited by law see the complete approach is changed okay so uh let me give you a parallel example let me give you a parallel example 
so father says father says uh, if you get permission from your professor then you can go to movie if you get permission then you can go to movie that's the approach very restricted approach also if you get permission do it mother says that you can go to movie no problem unless your professor has restricted professor has said no for movie so sa250 is very restricted approach very restricted approach towards disclosure very restricted approach towards disclosure and noclar has very open approach towards disclosure go and say unless prohibited noclar stipulates that in exceptional circumstances if professional accountant may eminent breach very big breach of law regulation that could cause substantial harm very big law is non complied and it's a huge impact they should first consider discussing discuss this matters with the tcwg and management they should then exercise professional judgment first discuss then apply professional judgment to determine whether to disclose matter immediately appropriate authority to prevent or mitigate consequences so if there is a very big breach first discuss and then think about it make a professional judgment should i go and uh, inform it to authority so that i can i can we can prevent we can prevent we can control the consequences unless it is prohibited by law if it is prohibited by law then we won't do it unless it is prohibited by law and if there is a confusion we have to take legal advices such disclosure that means a kind of disclosure is permitted you yourself decide whether to go and disclose but such provision is not present in sa250 sa250 doesn't encourage to go and disclose sa250 doesn't encourage to go and disclose but noclar says that in this specific situation unless it is prohibited by law you go and disclose so definitely there is a difference in these things so when it comes to assignments both are different noclar is broader law applicability again noclar is broader stakeholders impact analysis noclar is broader and disclosures again noclar is broader okay so i got a so which very uh, famous shortcut asl age sex location okay when you talk to someone maybe <laughs> so some of you must be omega what omega stars out here omega so recently students told me that there is some site called omega please don't get into these things you should not and you chat to you should you chat to random people you have a video chat oh, come on you don't have time to study you don't have time to sleep and you are supposed to or you will be doing chatting no no sir sometimes okay so asl asl d 86 location date so these are the point of differences they are the point of differences in approach of noclar and approach of sa250 this is a very interesting and uh, 
these things are become to become bigger as we go ahead in the profession this has been recently introduced these things have been recently introduced in the curriculum they are going to gain more and more importance now responding to nuclear responding to nuclear if uh, as i said if a child accountant is in service employment responsibilities of senior professional accountant are different they are bigger as compared to other child accountants so it is divided into two parts finally the most important thing is we have been discussing okay what is non compliance what kind of laws are there which non compliance will get covered which non compliance will not get covered how it is different from 250 how the approach is different and so on lot of things okay now what are we supposed to do so if we come across non compliance what are we supposed to do what should we do in this situation the core thing the most important thing the core thing the core thing most important thing that is missing okay now let's see guys so again a overview is given not a very detailed approach is given a overview and important from exam point of view it has been asked once it's important so and then we have no clear principles for chartered accountant who are doing audit so these are steps so i can say that it is a kind of a overview these are steps these are steps kind of overview in fact i have included more stuff than module i have included more stuff than module so that at least you should have something to write okay so what noclar says finally if you come across non compliance you should obtain understanding so suppose suppose you you come across uh, a non compliance where there is a uh, you come across non compliance where lot of related party transactions are done related party transactions are done and prices are not market prices at terms and conditions which are not at arms length they are not market prices they are not fair prices without approval of shareholders and board of directors and audit committee so without approval of audit committees or board of directors or shareholders without their approval such big transactions are done so it's a non compliance so you come across it what are we supposed to do understand the nature understand okay understand exactly what kind of transaction took place it was sale purchase of land which took place okay with whom it took place so and so parties okay so they are covered in definition of related party fine further understand uh what what was the amount what was the price of these land parcels and at what prices transaction took place then understand consequences as per law Cons and understand what will be what what will be consequences what what will be what will be consequ what will be consequences as per law very important to understand this what will be consequences as per law okay whether these transaction will be void ab initio uh whether it will become a personal liability of the directors who have done this or em officer employees who have done this whether there will be a legal case of fraud because of this how much loss how much loss company is going to face because of this so understand the matter then you need to address the matter how to address the matter go and discuss with immediate superior communicate tcwg go and talk to your superior oh i have come across so and so thing 
go and talk to management or tcwg oh so and so thing has happened go and go and share facts with them discuss with them so and so thing has happened how are you going to rectify it how are you going to comply it go and discuss with them determine whether further action is needed uh, am i supposed to am i supposed to go one step ahead am i supposed to go to parent company management of parent company am i supposed to go and inform these guys am i supposed to resign if you are not sure take seek advice take legal consultancy it can be some lawyers in the firm it can be uh, it can be external law firms you can talk to ca institute also their ethical standard board what to do in this scenario think about it are you supposed to go to any appropriate authority we have just discussed if it's a eminent breach very big breach of uh, law lot of big consequences and as per professional judgment if you want to stop the harm effect mitigate the harm effect we are supposed to inform authority is it think about it is it a eminent breach big impact and then finally document so what are we supposed to do in nokla so what are we supposed to do in nokla we are supposed to do these things in nokla okay we are supposed to do these thing in nokla we are supposed to see it's in logical sequence you don't need a mnemonic for this we are supposed to understand what has went wrong what are the consequences we need to address the issue by going and we need to address the issue by we need to address the issue we need to go and discuss with people that so and so thing has happened we may need to think uh, we are, so basically we are informing people further action whether going to the parent company then resigning we need to think about it whether to go to appropriate authority finally we need to make a conclusion is it a imminent breach because responsibility is increase if it is a imminent breach and lastly we are supposed to document everything see it's a logical sequence you don't need a mnemonic out here okay so guys that was beautiful and lovely beautiful and lovely noclar and this is going to be a very important important thing as you go ahead uh it is regarding misconduct we are going to see it later later in the sense as we go ahead in the chapter we are going to come across concept of misconduct concept of misconduct concept of professional professional misconduct other misconduct uh we are going to automatically automatically it will get covered in fact in much detail it will get covered so we are going to see it later documentation requirement so it's very simple we are supposed to document what kind of noclar clear understanding what kind of non compliances were there what kind of consequences were there uh as per professional judgment document those things then uh, what how you addressed is what kind of discussions you had with the senior superiors further action what kind of response management whether they tried to rectify the situation whether they tried to comply with the situation go and understand that then what he did what as a chart account he did what things he did whether he went and reported it to someone prepared someone whether what kind of uh, whether he took legal advice whether he took legal advice whether he, uh, when he reported to someone what he did steps taken by him how he protected public interest whether public at large were at risk and how he protected save public at large now these requirements are apart from standards and auditing so we have one sa250 which says that if you come across non compliance you are supposed to follow these steps and you are supposed to document it so we have to follow if you are doing audit we have to follow sa250 for sure this is apart from that apart from that 
Right, guys, so it's very simple. We are supposed to document our understanding, clear understanding of important issues that arose during the audit, including conclusion reached and professional judgment, reached and professional judgment made in reaching those conclusions. So, clear understanding of important issues that arose during the audit, including conclusion reached and professional judgment made in reaching those conclusions, clear understanding. Then, uh, then after then after understanding, then you go for the next. Uh, then you go for the next that is discussions. First, understand things. Then, what kind of discussions we are done? What kind of management response, account response? It's again is a very a very simple flow, and this uh, this is apart over and above what is required as per standards on auditing. Standards and auditing says that all the non-compliances, its impact should be documented. It's very simple, guys. Okay, right, guys. So finally, 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 we are through. We are through. We are through with what? We are through with the code of ethics. The theoretical portion theoretical portion theoretical portion of code of ethics see in last three lectures we were not able to have a complete quota of our class timings we are not able to have for some reason or the other uh, but then fortunately from today onwards we are having the full quota of our class okay so we are going to cover more things now See guys, uh, audit is a huge course, lot of points, a lot of discussions, lot of approaches, lot of controversies and uh, so course is huge and we need a lot of time to cover, uh, to cover this particular course. Let me see, I think 100 hours, 100 hours around that uh, we will need to cover this particular course. But then uh, point is we are supposed to make good use of whatever time we are having. We should not uh, compromise with that time in any manner. Okay. In between, uh, in between, uh, uh, I, I try to give you some dose of uh, other matters also because I know I know that uh, it is concepts raining everywhere. It is concepts raining everywhere. You need little bit of time to breathe, relax, express. That's fine, guys. Okay. So in between, you can do that. That's absolutely fine. But then, see, audit is a lovely subject. Sir! Don't, don't see different. I love. I teach. I see. I love audit. I teach audit. Come on. I understand. It's it's theory. It's the, It's a lot of theory. But don't worry. We have a, we have designed a beautiful and foolproof approach. Beautiful foolproof approach. If you follow that approach, it you will feel extremely fine, extremely comfortable. Okay. And it's very systematic and step by step and the way we are studying my objective is to make you ready for any kind of case study any kind of case study these concepts should have deep impact on your understanding a thorough conceptual understanding should be there of the matters why there are matters what are the matters and so on now guys let's see membership of the institute so, as soon as you clear your CA exams, you complete your article, you clear your CA, you complete your article ship, you complete your CA exams and the and more conditions and trainings which are given, you have to apply. You, you don't automatically become, you then you become eligible to, mem, to become member of ICAI. You have to, you have to, fill up form number two and submit it 
that please admit me as a member of the ca institute member of the ca institute and then and then you get and then you get membership certificate membership certificate and then you get registered as a member so so first thing is you have to make application to council it is form number 2 you have to make application no need to remember the c category but these are some basics you should be aware about if if someone was not aware about it uh if with if proper application is there application name is entered in the register of member he becomes officially member of the institute he gets a membership number he gets beautiful wonderful when membership number a number which is going to stay with the chartered accountant for life long and he will be given a certificate of membership issued the applicant a register will have all the detail basic details so name of the person and a uh, name of the chartered accountant uh, whether he is having uh, whether he is having certificate of practice name of the chartered accountant then he is a associate we'll discuss about the associate chartered accountant or fellow so those chartered accountant who have uh, more than 5 years who have 5 years or more experience they can apply and become fca senior chartered accountant that means fellow chartered accountant so name of the person whether he is a associate chartered accountant whether he is a fellow chartered accountant whether he is having a certificate of practice or not you directly cannot go for practice you need to again apply for certificate of practice so you get certificate of practice and then you can do the practice thing cop then the contact address all these details are there in the register so basic details additional information apart from this can be there if required by the council it's very simple now disabilities for the purpose of membership so you can call it disqualifications i'm not sure i understand so we have uh, section 8 disqualifications some of you must be feeling relief oh yes i used to love disqualifications i used to love disqualifications in audit i am missing company audit that used to be so interesting that used to be so 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 interesting i am missing that time i am missing that time i want disqualification so finally i am having this disqualifications so you can call it that disqualifications of memberships disabilities so who cannot become member of the ca institute who who cannot become who cannot become member of the ca institute okay let's see this again logical sequence so first thing is uh, okay guys uh, one more thing before i start here see uh, uh, we will not be now we will be shifting from uh, youtube to our app now we'll be shifting to our app so all of you are uh, you will be most probably today today you will be uh, getting calls or messages from our team regarding installation of the installation of app either in your mobile phone or in your laptop you can play one device at time either mobile or laptop you can play that so we will be shifting to the app and you will be informed about it so i will say that wait till evening wait till evening and uh, if you face any problem you have to contact our admin please be polite with them okay 
they are also human beings. Don't vent out your frustration on them. I understand you guys are, are in a lot of pressure. 9322011915. It's a audit guru admin. And uh, you can talk to them from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on working days. They also need break. Okay. They also need break. They are not robots. So you can talk to them and they will help you with installation or whatever problem you are facing. Give them time guys. Some patients, the students, they are worried a lot. They are worried a lot till they don't get access. They are dying. They are behaving like a fish without water. Sir lectures, sir notes, sir books. And the moment they get everything, for next one week, they are not watching a single lecture. They are not reading a single line from the book. What nonsense. Okay. I am saying you should study. But then sometimes we have our different emergencies all together. Please don't do that. Okay. So we have come across such cases. Now, Now let's see, Disqualifica disqualifications, disqualifications and disabilities. So if a person has not attained the age of 21, he is disqualified. If he has not attained the age of 21, he is disqualified. No one can become chartered accountant till the time he attains the age of 21. So, if someone says technically that I became chartered accountant at the age of 19, not possible as per law. As per section 8 of CA Act, as per section 8 of CA Act, see only some of the sections are important. Don't go and cram the complete CA Act, and very rarely they. They never focus on section numbers here. But then definitely you should you can you should remember this section 8. So section 8. If the person has not attained the age of 21, he is disqualified. Now the person is grown up. Fine. But then his he is adjudged by competent court as unsound mind. Unsound mind. So, instead of mental capacity, a better word is unsound mind. You can make the changes. Unsound mind. So, if the person has not earned the age, disqualified, he has attained the age, but he is a person of unsound mind, disqualified. El, other, or else, he is a person with lot of evil mind, evil mind, insolvent. Now, let us understand something about insolvency. Come here, for knowledge I have written.
that's important knowledge if if any persons if any persons liability is more than assets then that person then that person is called as insolvent that that person that person is called as insolvent if So that is insolvent. Now, if any person's liability is more than assets, suppose there is a person whose liabilities are 50 crores and value of the assets available with him is only 30 crores, then that person will be considered as insolvent. Now, and a lot of disputes will happen now. So, there will be uh, 20. 100 people who want 50 crores and their assets, there will be a lot of chaos, there will be a lot of chaos, a lot of problems, a lot of disputes. Uh, so, that insolvent person can go to court and says that, yes sir, it has happened, that I am insolvent, this is, these are the documents, these are the documents and uh, please declare me insolvent, I am an insolvent, please declare me insolvent. And please take charge of the assets. Uh, please appoint someone and as per your guidance that someone will sell off the assets, get the money and pay off the liabilities. Please discharge, discharge, discharge me. Take my assets, sell it and pay off my liabilities, pay off my liabilities and tell the world now I don't have anything to give. Please discharge me. So first person becomes insolvent. Then he goes to court and makes a request. Then he is discharged. Now during the proceedings, if person proves, if person proves that this insolvency has happened, not because of his mistake, not because of my mistake, not because of my mistake, but because of misfortune. My fortune was not all fine, misfortune. I, I went for a factory, an earthquake took place, everything was destroyed before I could, before I can take insurance policy. My misfortune, I made restaurants and covid stuck and we were hit by covid my misfortune so court will give a certificate yes he is a discharged insolvent and insolvency is not because of his wrong deeds it is because of his misfortune so that he can show this certificate to people and prove his innocence and start his new life. So first happens insolvency, then go to court and go for discharge and then you may or may not get misfortune certificate. So that is explained here. That is explained here. Not able to pay his liabilities, person can go to prove his liabilities Court will declare him insolvent. Further, can request court to take control of the assets and sell them and pay creditors and discharge him. Discharge him. So, you can go to the court and please declare me insolvent and tell to people that there are serious issues with my financial things. And if the assets are sold off, liabilities are paid, it's called discharge insolvent may give him certificate, he may get a certificate of misfortune. So three things, first he is declared insolvent, then he is discharged insolvent, when he is, when first he is declared insolvent, then he is discharged insolvent and then he gets misfortune certificate. Now what, it's, what they say that, 
if a person if a if a person is in if a person till the time see if he is declared insolvent declared insolvent uh, declared in, he will get disqualified he will he cannot become member and if he is a member he will be removed from the register of member yes a moment chartered accountant a moment chartered accountant becomes insolvent the moment chartered account is declared as insolvent he is disqualified if the discharge processing proceedings cases case is going on he is disqualified he is disqualified if he gets discharged with misfortune certificate so till the time chartered accountant is insolvent undischarged insolvent he is disqualified moment he gets discharge along with misfortune certificate along with misfortune certificate he will be qualified so he will lose his membership and once he get that discharge certificate uh, he get discharge with misfortune certificate he can re enroll himself re enroll himself as a member undischarged insolvent undischarged insolvents or discharged insolvents without court certificate stating their insolvency was due to misfortune without misconduct cannot be registered so those who are in court right now undischarged they are disqualified those who are discharged without having that certificate again they are disqualified then if chartered accountants are convicted for criminal convictions for criminal things moral turpitude they have done something which is against moral principles of the society we are not talking about non technical uh, we are talking about an we are not about technical offense so you are not filed returns on time signature was not proper stamp was not proper no no we are talking about serious serious criminal activities like uh, selling drugs doing terrorist uh, doing terrorist activity murder killing someone moral turpitude moral turpitude or non technical big offense big offense in their professional capacity unless pardoned unless pardoned pardoned or disability removed by central government okay so if a chartered accountant is convicted convicted for crime involving moral turpitude as i said killing someone or uh, uh, selling drugs terrorism anti national things if you are doing these things then that person will be disqualified but if but if he is pardoned so uh, victim victim pardons him victim says okay whatever has happened has happened he has suffered enough enough he has suffered enough he has done good things and we are legally pardoning him for all his crimes if people pardon him he is saved again he will be qualified or central government says that whatever he did he did for for nation whatever he did he did it for nation and we are removing his disability we are removing his disability and making him eligible to become member he can become so if someone has done criminal activity and if someone is convicted for criminal activity they will be disqualified there are two ways they can they can come back either they get pardon or central government removes their disability either of the two things will be required to come back
professional misconduct we are going to study if you don't follow requirement of ca act if you don't follow requirement of ca act then that's called profession broadly that's called professional misconduct and in punishment and you may get a punishment where your name is removed from the register of members for three months six months one year two year or permanently so again you will be disqualified to be a member during that tenure let's understand this four things five things so if the person has not attained the age of 20 if the person has not attained the age of 21 person will be disqualified if he has attained the age but mentally not stable disqualified extraordinary extraordinary intelligent insolvent disqualified undischarged insolvent disqualified discharge without misfortune certificate disqualified criminal conviction disqualified professional misconduct remove the name from register disqualified now many of you must be thinking sir you spoke about these things absolutely fine but can we get the membership back of course so you cannot become member if you are facing these problems okay you can have a shortcut professional accountant in icu professional accountant in icu okay p stand for professional misconduct you have done something against the ca act and you are punished with removal of membership you are disqualified if you are not age limit age is not you are not 21 years of age disqualified insolvent disqualified criminal conviction disqualified unsound mind disqualified so if a professional accountant is in icu disqualified can you get your membership back of course we will study about that now types of members it's it's very simple it's very simple so we have section 5 moment you will become a day you apply for membership and institute gives you membership grants you membership you will be called your name will be written in members register as associate chartered accountant that golden day just think about it just think about it just visualize it feel it your dream is coming true you thought about this day you thought about this day for past three years four years five years you have been waiting for this day you have worked really hard for it you have trained really hard for it okay that day you have to visualize this thing i i sincerely and seriously believe that so start of the day i will visualize how my day is going to be so i am going to love i am going to love doing this i am going to do love doing this so so and so so and so so and so so and so things it's going to be fun so i visualize my whole day and then our subconscious mind is so strong is so strong it automatically brings out what we want okay so you should visualize and everything will help you to achieve that visualize that so visualize today about the day visualize today about the day you are dreaming of okay now section 5 says that moment you become uh, section 5 says that moment you become child accountant your name your name will be written 
your name will be written in members register as associate chartered accountant associate chartered accountant register member becomes associate denoted by letters aca after their name so they can write aca a dot c dot a aca after their name so denote that there are if they want it's not mandatory fellow now it's very interesting so moment you become fellow chart account means senior chart account moment you moment you become moment you become uh, a fellow chart accountant you will be get you will be uh, getting more points and more work from authorities from authorities and in fact uh, there are companies and their assignments where they demand that a senior chart accountant should do it senior chart accountant should do it so uh, fellow chart fellow chart account fellow chart accountant should do it okay now let's see fellow members can become fellows fellow chart accountant denoted by fca by meeting certain criteria they have to meet certain criteria then they have to apply apply with the prescribed fees then you become fellow chart accountant okay so it's interesting you cannot become a fellow chart accountant automatically you have to apply for it with the fees and then only you become a fellow chart accountant okay now then only you become fellow chart accountant so who can become fellow chart accountant if you are a associate chart accountant with continuous practice in india for 5 years so if you are a associate and you are continuous practice in india for 5 years so once you become a chart accountant take a cop practice in india practice in india for 5 years you become eligible for fca apply for it and get it but if you are in practice outside india foreign practice that will not be counted to get status of fca that will not be counted so you need to be practicing chart accountant you need to do you need to do practice in india as per indian laws as per indian laws indian system then you will become eligible to become fca then next is suppose you are a associate member for at least 5 years suppose you are a associate member associate member associate member for for at least 5 years associate member for at least you are simply a chartered account for 5 years you are not continuously practicing in india then in that case if you prove that if you prove that you have knowledge and experience you prove that you have knowledge and experience just like a person who is in practice so you need to prove that that you have a knowledge and experience just like a person who is in practice so for this institute has clarified that they need to fulfill certain conditions plus qualification here it means conditions as prescribed by council and uh, generally the condition is you should be doing job you should be doing job in uh, accountancy taxation law consultancy if you're doing this ca related work for 5 years 
it proves that you have knowledge and experience similar to a chartered accountant, similar to a chartered accountant who is in practice. Okay, so let's freeze. You can become a fellow chartered accountant in two ways. Number one, if you are an associate chartered accountant and you are practicing continuously for five years in India, you can apply for FCA. If you are an associate chartered accountant, but you are not practice, you are not practicing in India for five years. You are just an associate chartered accountant. Okay, then in such case. You need to prove institute that you have similar kind of knowledge and experience. And so basically the second one, basically the second one is for those, those who are in job. The second thing, the second point, the second point is for those, those who are in job. So you may get a question exam. Can chartered accountants in job also apply for FCA? Yes. If they are associate chart accountant for continuously five years, plus, plus, if they are able to prove that their job qualification, they got the experience and knowledge similar to experience knowledge that a person with five years of experience, uh, five years of practice has, he can definitely, he can definitely apply for FCA. So a person in practice can also apply for FCA and person in job also can apply for FCA. That's interesting guys. Both can apply for FCA. And they can put letters after name. Both associate and fellows are entitled to use specific letters after their names to indicate their membership status. So they can write ACA, they can write ACA or they can write FCA. Well guys, we'll stop here. I will give you audio of yesterday also and today also. Keep listening to them. Listen to them again and again. Listen two to three audios on daily basis. Even if you know everything, do listen to them. Moment you listen to them again and again, you will feel comfortable. You will do better. Bye bye everyone and tomorrow we will be having 